Uh, good evening. I'm uh, Hasina Hawk from Electrical Engineering Department, and today I'm going to present gallium nitride uh, thin flame, and that is uh, for uh, biosensor applications. So I'd like to dedicate my uh, uh, talk today for my friend. She is uh, suffering for cancer for years, and she strongly believes that prayer is making difference in her life. So if you have time, please pray for her. And she has a, a brain tumor right now, like directed last week. So that's why I, I just want to dedicate that talk to my friend. Okay, now go to the. So the material we are using here at UTPA is the Algan GAN hemp. And here we see the periodic table, and this ga gallium nitride material is a combination of 3 5 coming from 3 5 group. And why it is important? It's very important for biosensing, and it has also other potentials. So my graduate students uh, developed some of the devices, and we tested that one, and we had good results. And the machine that we have here is uh, supported by a National Science Foundation's uh, MRA grant. So the device that we are trying to build is the similar to like that, but it's going to be in nanoscale. So all the thickness dimensions are na nanoscale. So there are uh, fabrication steps. So a couple of steps it involves. The first one is the depositions. Then the next one is patterning. We have to make some gay drain and source. Then the last part is the aging. So these are very simplified uh, presentations of the fabrication steps. So we can do that one by two methods. One is chemical vapor depositions, and another is physical vapor depositions. Chemical vapor deposition, the name itself says it has some chemical reactions. And the, another one is the physical vapor depositions, like the second figure. Uh, it, uh, it extract the atoms from the target, then deposit it on the substrate material. So here we have the PVD system physical vapor deposition system. So sputtering process is something like that. The top one is the target. The bottom part is the substrate. And we uh, give some process gas, usually inert gas, argon. Then we apply some voltages, and it's energized the particle. Then these energized particles hit the target and dislodge the atoms. So we can grow atom by atoms layer. So we can grow nanoscale, nanometer thickness layers. So the sputtering machine that we have is engineering building, high bay area. It looks like that. It has the sputtering chamber. It has DC and RF voltage sources. It has temperature. So we can go up to 850 degrees Celsius. For fabrication process, temperature is a very important uh, parameter. So the sample we grow here, the first one is like a silicon uh, wafer. And the second one shows uh, after depositing different materials. And it also depends on different parameters, like the pressure, the temperature, the total power, and the colors also changes. So it tells you the quality of the thin flames. So after, for characterization, we did the XRD, and it shows, uh, the peak shows like where we are getting the uh, materials, whether it's a good deposition or bad depositions. And we have a couple of samples. And uh, my students summarize all the samples. Our main goal is to deposit gallium nitride on silicon substrate, but we observe that there are some other materials present in the uh, sample, which is oxygen, copper, carbon. So we have to investigate wh why we are getting these uh, other atoms. So these are the two samples. And one is the dark blue and purple, and another is the light blue or light purple. So it also shows you the quality of the uh, sample or quality of the depositions. And it, these are controlled by different things, like the pressure, temperature, the applied potential, the gases that we are using. So all of these things affecting the 
deposition rate or deposition growth. So these are some of the samples we deposited and we analyzed uh, the deposition and we got that table. So it shows that the last, uh, the last row shows the better deposition rate where the uh, last two rows where the nitrous and gallium ratio is the highest. So that is another uh, also the um, analyzing technique and the, the next uh, figure shows the images and that is in the nanometer scale. So it shows the surface is not good. There are some, um, uh, the surface is not uniform. So we have to take some uh, precautions how to improve the surface. One is like rotations. If, you, uh, if we give higher rotation, it may help to have uniform uh, deposition. So when we are doing those things, we also uh, observe that the two targets, one is after poisoning and the other one is after cleaning. So if we don't give proper parameter, if the environment is not good, then we can have uh, target poisoning. So these are some of the like effects we have to uh, check carefully. So why we are doing all of these uh, like uh, research? It's mainly to improve our system. So we, have, we, ha we like to have a smaller device. Right now we have like um, iPhone, iPad, these are coming smaller and thinner. And this basic research started from the material. If you change the different materials, you can have same system but with different quality. So that w one of the goal is how to get smaller devices. Uh, we need also cooling system like in the car, in PCs, everywhere we need a cooling system. So if a system is smaller, we accept the, um, the cooling system will be smaller. So the overall system will be uh, smaller. We need high voltages for like uh, power, uh, power plant. We need high voltages and also some, for some application we need high current. So these are some of the things when we go for better system solu solution, we need to think about that, how can we get higher voltage, higher current, high temperature operations. So uh, the material that I'm talking about is the gallium nitride. It's uh, known as wide band gap material because its a band gap is very high. So it can handle high power as well as high temperature. So this figure shows uh, some information like the red one or the, the bottom one is a silicon based electronics. and. Uh, most of the commercially available electronics is silicon based. So it has a limitation right now based on its frequency and op output power level. So how we can get rid of those things. So researchers are working on some other materials. So they go for silicon carbide we can ha which can handle high power. They are also looking for gallium nitride which is also high power as well as high frequency. Then another one is gallium arsenide then the best material that we can have for the electronics is diamond, but still it's under research and that one is very expensive. So right now the research is going on in uh, silicon carbide area, gallium nitrate area, and gallium arsenide. Some of the electronics devices are still available in the market. But most of the electronics devices that we see today in our cell phone, iPhone, or PC, uh, iPad is like silicon based. All the ICs that are designed based on silicon materials. So some other applications why we are looking for some other materials like spacecraft. Now we have spacecraft which is huge. So if we use uh, uh, gallium nitrate instead of silicon, we can have the similar performance but the size will be smaller. We can use uh, this type of material for air cat for mining where we need uh, temp where we have temperature difference utility where we need high power nuclear power we also need high power hybrid electric vehicle some of the parts right now we see it's uh, replaced by electric systems some electronic parts so if you change the material silicon to gallium nitrate or silicon to silicon carbide it efficiency increases so that's why researchers are investigating on new materials like gallium nitride some other applications all ICs 
currently these are silicon based, but if you replace some of the parts by silicon carbide, its uh, power handling capacity increases. If you uh, in change some of the parts by gallium nitride, its frequency handling capacity will be increased. So why it is important? Because we all want uh, speed, high speed um, internet. When we are uh, watching the videos, we need high speed. So if you change the materials, it helps us to go to that level, high speed and high frequency. So these also some other areas where we see uh, wide band gap applications in the fabrication industries, also in biomedical si sites. In biosensor, there are lots of applications of gallium nitride. It can detect. Uh, blood molecules, uh, an important molecule in blood, which is MIG. If, you, if someone has some um, organ transplant, then these type of devices made with uh, gallium nitride can detect without, implement, uh, without implantation, it can detect the, uh, like whether the implantation is okay or not. It can give some kind of information in terms of electrical signals. So that's why we are doing uh, the investigation of gallium nitrate-based devices. So this is called the wafer, the big one, and the small blocks are the individual devices, and the top part is coated by gold. So from there, we get the terminals, and if you apply some voltages, it's able to give some kind of signals, and these signals uh, can be represented by different information, can represent different information. So these are some of the students and high school teachers worked with me last couple of uh, ye years. And uh, it was supported by National Science Foundation RET project. The, my student uh, in the middle, she graduated from UTP and now working at um, IBM. And she worked on a sputtering system and she developed all of these results that I showed here. So other one is the graduate, undergraduate student right now, and the three are uh, for, came here for summer, uh, high school teacher for summer research. So we all, uh, in these slides we see like the team that we are working uh, on sputtering machines. So me, my colleague, Dorina Mihut, then my student, Samuel, he also graduated from UTPA last year and now working at IBM. Then the commissioning engineer who showed, who gave us the training. Then another student, Hector, who also graduated from here and uh, working with hemp devices and now working in Intel. So some of the outcomes from uh, these research, we already have the lab. We published a lot of publication. To Thesis already have been completed, and there are also graduate and undergraduate level courses we are offering here. So I'm going to show a video to see the basic principle of the um, sputtering machines, and we also try to go uh, for outreach program here. Uh, and and uh, one of the goal for this project was how to increase the female uh, engineering students because there is a lack of female engineering students or, uh, or in STM field. So one of our goal is how to increase this one. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to this slide. So I'm gonna uh, show a video here to, so we can watch the sputtering uh, process. I can start from this. Yeah, that, no, that's fine. Sorry.
So these are kind of the process we use for sputtering. So now I'm open for questions. Do you have any questions? You're not using a clean room. You're doing upstairs in the high bank. Yes, we are just ordered the clean enclosure because it's kind of very expensive. So we, we already order a clean enclosure. It's not the clean room, but it's going to provide class 7 clean room environment. Does that make a difference to your impurities? Yes. A question. So, uh, interesting technology. As you mentioned, that uh, at least with semiconductor applications, this is still all silicon based. What's the primary factor that's preventing kind of this shift to using this approach and this material rather than silicon? What's the one factor? It's encouraging or is the barrier? It's barrier. The main barrier is the cost. So all the fabrication facility that's available is silicon. It's built for silicon. So, fabrication cost is the most expensive one, and now it is the main barrier. So you see that uh, as people get better at doing this process, that the cost going down, so it is competitive. Yeah, that, so yes. So is that five years, ten years, hundred years? Uh, like uh, small devices are already in the market, like very simple, but uh, like uh, complicated or complex devices are still under uh, research. So do you think from your research and your applications, you're going to get the uh, uh, start of a commercializable product? Uh, yeah, we hope for that thing. We are going in that direction, but uh, you know, we need also uh, facilities that is not sufficient here. So because any product must be cleaner, we need clean room that uh, we don't have now. So we have, um, that's why we have contamination in the sample that reduce the quality of the like product that we are going here. Do you have a, <coughs> you were talking about quality later. Do you have a uh, feedback loop where you can measure the uniformity of the actual sputtering coming onto the fabric or material? In, in the machine, we don't have the like uh, monitoring system, the thickness, but we have FM, uh, uh, SAM uh, access, so we can measure the thickness, everything. And uh, like, and for new material, we do have to do some trial or er error basis. But for known material, uh, reference help us to get an idea how much thickness we're gonna get. I know you had mentioned that the quality of the fabrication is a little low right now because of add-on materials, but what does that actually mean as far as usability of what you're producing? Because as a student, <coughs> could I go into your lab and create something that I could actually use to sense things with? Or? Yes, like, uh, uh, like there are current level in milliamp, current level in nanoamps. So we cannot uh, measure nanoamps, but milliamp, amps, we can measure. So it's, it's uh, related to the like, quality. If uh, you want to implant something in human body, it should be very, uh, uh, voltage, current level should be very small. So that's why we are going in that direction, scaling down. But uh, for other use, like capacitor or big thing, yes, we can do that. We, we already built some capacitors. So the use of silicon, I know it's very wide out there. Uh, gallium, I know gallium arsenic is of the photovoltaic cells, right? That's the most efficient way of converting. 
like is 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 this the approach so that you can find the midpoint between the two extremes, I guess? Or? Silicon is uh, commercially available and it's for general application. But when you go for gallium arsenide, it's uh, uh, it is expensive compared to silicon, but it gives some specific application, like uh, LEDs, all the light emitting diodes. We have better uh, performance from gallium arsenide, not from silicon. So if you go increase your cost, then gallium nitrate gives you more uh, like. Uh, uh, more reliability, some other performance. So it's uh, actually a balance of cost and the performance. It's not for general use, it's for some specific applications, like if someone wants to use for biomedical. So exp uh, we can use gallium nitrate devices for that one because these are expensive. If someone wants to use the cell phone in um, like a space, so this cell phone is not going to work. So we need different material, but this cell phone will work um, like space. So th then we need to think about not silicon other materials. What substrate are you using? Right now we are using silicon, sapphire, and glass substrate. Uh, can you mention any uh, simulation software that, that people can use to start doing simulations? Yes, yeah, so it's a Silvaco Atlas software we use. And, uh, like our electrical engineering graduate and undergraduate program senior, we offer uh, uh, Silvaco simulations to related projects. So, other question? Does the rarity of the material affect like the commercialization of technology? Because I know silicon right now. I mean, at least maybe a year or two ago, I had heard that there was a shortage of silicon. So is, is that similar, like, is gallium very well diverse? Uh, silicon, actually, silicon material we get from the beach sands. As long as sand is there, silicon will be there. So there is no shortage of silicon, but there is a shortage of its performance. That's why we are going for other material. Gallium nitrate, it's very difficult to grow because there is a specific portion of gallium and specific portion of nitrogen, and bonding is very uh, it's not that easy. So there are a couple of parameters we need to maintain to get a good gallium nitride, like wafer or bulk material, which is very difficult to grow. But silicon, it, it grow is a fabrication process is uh, easy, and silicon is the cheapest material found in nature, like sand beach. After doing some process, you, we can get silicon. Other questions? When you mean when you when you mention about a clean environment, uh, what does it need to have uh, one laboratory for being totally clean about any extra particles that can damage your samples? So yes, that is going to be a good solution, but it's uh, you ha it's uh, very expensive. It's human body can carry uh, lots of contaminations, lot of particles. So we need to wear a space suit space should and it need to change every time and to maintaining and the, the room should have uh, like the process gases and the particle the filter so these all of these are very expensive but we are trying to get one which uh, is plus seven it can maintain plus seven environment there are different classes it control the particle size we cannot see it in bare eyes but it, it filter out big particles. Does it make sense? Yeah.